Okay, we have lecture 26, the standard normal random variable. Um, this is an extremely important random variable. It is going to form the, the key to just about everything we do from here on out. And before I get going, I'm going to list some facts here for you about the, the, this random variable. I want to say that this random variable, we should think about it right now just sort of in the abstract. We don't need to think about a, a particular experiment that has values of the random variable as numerical outcomes. All right, um, We're just going to look at this random variable as something that takes on values on the real axis and has a particular PDF, a particular curve to it. Later on, we'll see how it connects up with all kinds of real world uh, applications. But initially, we'll just kind of think of it a little bit abstractly. All right. so. Um, Let's see, we have the standard normal random variable, and here are some facts. Fact number one, it is a continuous random variable, all right? So it takes on values inside an interval, infinitely many values. And I'm telling you right now, it takes on all possible values from minus infinity to infinity. So the values for this random variable will be spread all along the real axis, the real number line, and there's not a single value missing. All right, they're all there. Um, its PDF is bell-shaped, and here's where we get to that famous uh, uh, notion of a bell-shaped curve, and I'll draw it here in a second. There's a space for you to, to draw its graph, and we'll, we'll look at it a little bit more in a second, but let me get these facts down here first. Um, the letter we use for it normally, the symbol is the capital Z. That's just kind of standard, and it's just something you should be aware of. When you see capital Z from now on, it should mean the standard normal random variable. All right, uh, and we often call the value of z, a particular value, we call it a z-score, which we've already seen in the past, and so we'll connect back with that notion of a z-score in the past. Um, it does connect up with this, this particular random variable, and that's why we call a particular value a z-score. And um, this random variable is so important. It's a continuous random variable, right? Very hard to um, compute the mean and the standard deviation, and very hard to compute probabilities over intervals. You need calculus to do that. But it's so important that all of that stuff has been worked out in the past and um, it's all tabulated. So um, you can go on the web and type in z-table and just a million uh, tables will come up. Any textbook's going to have uh, z-tables in it. Any statistical software package will have that built into it. Okay, so let me put that up in the corner there. So there's all the facts. And let me just draw then the picture. And this will be a you know, somewhat rough picture but you should get the idea. So it takes on all values from minus infinity to infinity. So, you know, I, I got the, the number line stretches forever, right? And I'm going to have to indicate that, that the, the, this uh, curve stretches forever, too. And it, it comes in very close to the uh, uh, x-axis when we get out here far enough. And then it comes up, and it humps up, and it humps back down. And it goes off like that forever. Okay, so it's continuous. I got the whole, uh, every value possible between minus infinity uh, and infinity. And as you can see, this bell shape, it's symmetric. I didn't put that. Let me put that one here. Uh, how about, right? It's symmetric with respect to the y or vertical axis. All right, so if I were to fold this half over, it would lay exactly on top of that half, right? Um, that's a very important fact. We will use that fact later on. The way I've drawn it, it looks a little off, but, you know, pretend I drew better than I did. I'm going to be drawing this a lot. You're going to be drawing it a lot, and we'll just try to do the best we can. Um, it's kind of interesting because the arms, so to speak, of the graph go forever, and yet what must be true? What must be true is that if I look at... Total area is the total probability for all possible values of this random variable, and so it's got to be 1. So I have this interesting thing where I have this interesting shape which stretches from minus infinity to infinity, and it sits above the x-axis, the horizontal axis, um, which you probably should call the z-axis now, right? Because the values of z are along here. And, um, and yet the area is finite. The total area is finite. Okay, so the z scores, the various values of z, are along this axis, correct? 
and the probability density is this curve. Okay, and I think um, what I want to do, okay, I say here that um, most of the tables, I say that these values are tabulated, and most of the tables they will give you for a particular z-score, they will give you the probability or area under the PDF that is to the left of that z-score. In other words, they'll give you the, the probability that the z-random variable is less than or less than or equal to that particular z-score. So I just want to do some examples here. So let's see, go to the next page. And I think I have, yeah, a, a page, I pulled this off the web, it might look familiar to you. This is um, a, a part of a, a Z table, and it says positive Z scores. So I guess I can draw right here. Well, actually, I, well, let me go to my first problem. My first example says, find the probability that Z is less than 1.8. So I want the probability that Z is less than 1.08. Okay, so let us think what that means. That means if I think of my, my curve here, my bell-shaped curve, sorry for the squeaks, I am looking along the horizontal axis for a z-score of this value, 1.08, and asking what is the probability that z is less than 1.8, is seeing what's the probability that if I could randomly generate a z, a z value, it would be back here, right? Back here along this axis. And the answer, of course, is all this area going that way. And how on earth do I get that? I do calculus or I rely on the table. And I'm going to rely on my table, of course. And how do I read the table? Um, I don't even uh, give you instructions because it's pretty straightforward and I'll just demonstrate it here if you've never done this before. I want to find the z-score of 1.08 and find the corresponding probability. To find that z-score, I come over here, the z column, and I go down and notice I'm getting the first two digits. I'm getting the integer point des uh, tenth position. So I'll go down to 1.0, correct? And now look up along the top. Z going this way, I'm getting the hundredths position, right? And I want 0 0.08. So I get, where is it? Right there. So I want to go on th along this row down to this column and, the, yeah, one point, uh, sorry, 0 0.8599. So let me just say that this is equal to this area, just so we keep that conceptually in mind, and it was 0 0.8, what did I say, 8599, darn it, 1.0, yeah, 0 0.8599. So almost 86% of the area for the, for the, or the probability or area for the Z curve for the Z random variable lies to the left of 1.08. Next problem, probability Z less than or equal to 1.08. That's a trick question because, of course, it's a continuous random variable, and whether I'm worried about equaling a particular value or not, that doesn't change the probability because I'm taking off an infinite strip there. If I just look at less than, if I look at less than or equal to, I put that infinitely narrow strip back on. Either way, I'm not adding or subtracting any area, so the answer is the same. It's the same. So it's 0.8599. Okay, um, let's do another one. Let's do, I think I can get it right here. Probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 0 0.56. Probability that Z so is less than or equal to negative 0 0.56. So let me draw my little picture here. You should draw a picture. I want us to draw the pictures uh, every time, at least initially, to make sure we understand kind of conceptually what we're doing. This is a Z score and it lies to the left of zero, right? Of course, this is always zero. That's where, where the axes intersect. So I go back here some distance, and this will be negative 0 0.56. So what I'm asking for is, is this area, this area, and my arrow should go right to here because it's, it's that area right there that I want that. It goes on forever, right? And that's equal to what? I don't want to do calculus, I look it up in my table, so I go to 
oh, I have, look, it just says right here, positive z-scores. I have a negative z-score. So I go to my next table, which is just taken from uh, a, a different website, but uh, nonetheless, it works just fine. And I want negative 0.56. So I look down here and I have negative 0, 0.0, negative 0, negative 0 0.5, and I go over to, oh, oops, I gotta go back. This It's done this way. I got to go over to 0.6, which is right there. No, it's right. A little hard for me to read my own table. Yeah, it's right there. Negative 0 0.56, I get 0.2877. I did get 0.2877. All right. So um, almost 29% of the area lies to the left of negative 0 0.56. Okay, keep in mind, Z scores can land anywhere on the real axis. Z-scores can be positive or negative. They can be big, small, whatever. But the areas we're finding, the probabilities, will always be between 0 and 1, right? They'll always be positive numbers that won't get too big, right? 0.8599 or 0.2877. Those are the probabilities. OK, how are we doing on time? I think we're OK. I'm going to. Going to do, um, um, I say, find the area to the left of the z score negative 2.25. Okay, so what I'm asking for in that one where it says find the area to the left of the z score negative 2.25, I'm asking for the probability that z is less than negative 2.25. You need to understand when you see a sentence like that. That's what it means. And I'm not going to draw it this time. I want you to draw it, but I'm not going to take the time to draw it. It's going to bell curve and the negative 2.25 here and it's going to the left. But I want to save on erasing time if I can. Um, so I come over here and I get negative 2.2 and I go over to 5. Negative 2.25, it's 0 0.0122. 0 0.0122. Okay, so, you know, 1.22% of the area is to the left of negative 2.25. So that's getting out there kind of far off to the left. There's only not much more than 1% of the probability to its left, right? Okay, um, next one, find the probability that z is less than or equal to zero. Go back and look at that bell curve, and you don't need the table to tell you. That's sitting right dead in the middle. I said it, it's symmetric over that vertical axis, so half the probability has to be to the left, half has to be to the right. The answer for that one is 0.5. Right? I'm not going to work that one through. Okay, we can also use the, the chart to compute the probability that z lies to the right of a given z-score. We just need to remember how to think about complementary events. Suppose I have this. Suppose I have, uh, here's my z-score whatever it is, and here's my curve, and I want, I want this area. This is the probability that z is, lies to the right of the z-score, which means that, right? The probability that it's greater than the z-score. Do you see that I'm looking at the event that gives me z values that are out here? And I want that area, that probability. Most charts don't give it to you directly. They give you this area over here. But this area over here is the probability for the complementary event. Complementary event is, is that z is less than, or you could say less than or equal to that z score, which is, you know, that's this area, right? Try to use a different color. Can you tell it's a different color? Not much, but it's a different color. Okay, so what I need is, so the probability that z is greater than a z-score is equal to, how do you compute the complementary probability? The answer is, this is the one I can get from the table, correct? And that's this one, the probability that z is less than or equal to the z-score. So I want to do 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to the z-score. All right, so I have to compute the area to the left, and with that in mind, I can subtract from 1 to get the area to the right. I have to rub all this out because I have my, my uh, charts to come back up. So first problem you should try to do while I'm erasing, you should try to do um, the probability that z is greater than 1.67. Okay, so give that a try. Dropping my markers. Okay. I shall do it. 
probability that z is greater than 1.67. So here's my picture. All right, here is 1.67, so I want this, right? Equals this area. All right, but the area I can get is this area. Correct? And so this is going to be 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.67, which is this area. And if we look that up in the table, and I still have my table here, but now I need to go to back to the positive z scores, don't I? 1.67, I go to 1.6, and I slide over to here and get 0.9525. So it's 1 minus 0.9525, and that's what? 0 0.0475. So there you go. This area is 0.0475 because this area here is 0.9525, and I subtracted it from 1. Let's do another example. Um, find the probability that a, that a randomly chosen z value lies to the right of negative 1.82. That's asking for probability that lies to the right. It's greater than negative 1.82. That's got to be 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 1.82, which is 1 minus, look it up in my table, go to the negatives, and I get um, negative 1.8. And I have to slide all the way over to here, right? And get 0 0.0344. Whoops, I bumped my marker. 0 0.0344, so we get what? 0.9656. That's the answer there. So most of the area, 96.5% roughly, lies to the right of, of um, um, what was it, negative... 1.82. Again, you should draw the picture. I'm not taking the time to draw it just because mainly because it's, I want to cut down on erase time as much as I can. Okay, we're about done, um, except um, we can also use the probability to find, uh, use the, these charts to compute the, the probability that z lies between two specified z scores. How do you do that? Well, look at this. Suppose I wanted to know, let me just get all this rubbed out. Suppose I wanted to know the probability that Z lies between, maybe here's B and let's make, let's make here be A. Okay, I would like this probability in the middle here, right? The probability that z lies between those two values. Well, can you see that, of course, what I can do is I can compute the probability that z lies to the left of b, and now what did I get? I got all of this, but I got that stuff too. But that stuff is precisely the probability that z lies to the left of a. So how about if I just subtract that off? So the probability that z lies between a and b, which we would write it like this, that, that uh, a is less than or equal to z, which is also less than or equal to b, is going to be the probability that z is less than or equal to b, all of the pink stuff, minus the probability that z is less than or equal to a, the green area. And that's going to give me exactly what I want. All right, let's do two examples. Find the probability, and let's see, I think I can get it in right here. Probability that, what do I say? Negative 1.17 is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to 2.1. Okay, so um, yeah, if I draw my picture, uh, yeah, the picture's gonna look a lot like this one, right? I don't even know if I need to draw, but maybe I do just to make sure we have down exactly what's going on. So the picture is like this. And I want, uh, here's 2.1, and here's negative 1.17. I want this probability. So the area equals, that's what I'm after. 
correct? And what do I say to do? I'm going to take the probability that z is less than or equal to the bigger one. So all of this minus the probability that it's less than or equal to the smaller one. So all of that subtracted. So I'm going to get. So this is equal to equals the probability that z is less than or equal to 2.1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 1.17. And that's equal to, I'm going to come up here and, and write those in. So first one, probability z is less than or equal to 2.1. I come over here and I get 2, uh, two sorry, 2.1 right there is 2.10. So it's 0.9821. Right, so it's 0.9821, I'll put them in here, minus probability that, that z is less than negative 1.17, got to go to my negative uh, chart and for negative z scores and go negative 1.1, and it's right there, isn't it? 0 0.1210 minus 0 0.1210, so I can get the answer in here, it's what, 0 0.8611, 0 0.8611, so that is the answer there, right? 86.11% of the area is between negative 1.17 and 2.1. I have one more. Uh, find the area between the z scores negative 1 and 1. All right, you do it, but look, if I get, uh, I have a z score of negative 1.0 is zero is 0.1379. So 0.1379, I'm going to subtract that from what? I'm, I'm blowing through this fast because you should be able to work it through, draw the picture and everything. In fact, pause me if, and do it first. But then what is the value, the z-score for, for um, sorry, the area for the z-score, 1.0? It's that. So it's a 0 0.8413, right? So I subtract and I get 4307, I think. Uh, is that right? Um, so I think so. Yeah, that's not the number I expected to get. Um, yeah, check my arithmetic. I was thinking it was going to be a tiny bit smaller than that. But you see what I'm doing, right? You should be able to draw the picture and, and check. And um, so this is the right answer, assuming I didn't make a um, mistake. Oh, I did make a mistake. Somewhere I've made a little mistake. Okay, um, 1.0, I get 0.8413. And I should have, this number is not right. This number should be... Um, 0 0.1587, I think. Yeah, that's better. If you look, if you do that subtraction, it should come out a little better. Sorry. Um, so what did we get? We get 6268, uh, right? That sounds more right. So about 68%, a little over 68% um, has of the random variable lies between um, uh, a z-score of minus 1 and a z-score of positive 1. And we will stop there.